This is for what it's worth, the world's first Mary Worth podcast. Sam and Eric use coarse language, and if you are offended by coarse language, please save yourself some trouble and cover your ears. There she stood in the doorway. I heard the mission bell. I was thinking to myself, this could be heaven or this could be hell. She lit up a candle and she showed me the way. There were voices down the corridor. I thought I heard them say, this is for what it's worth, the world's first and only Maryworth podcast. My name is Sam. Eric. Um. Eric, are you there? I thought we were recording, and you're you're supposed to introduce yourself. Hey. Oh, 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 oh! I just got an email. Uh, hang on, let me check my email here. Oh, oh, it's from Eric. Okay, um, let me see. It says, uh, dear Sam, it's me, Eric. I got sick, and my throat is all messed up. I've lost my voice, so I can't record a new episode of For What It's Worth with you this week. Oh, well, that's a... that's a bummer. I thought we were recording, but... Um, okay, let's read on. Do you remember a few years ago when we first started reading Mary Worth together? We recorded ourselves talking about it. I thought we could run that this week. Hugs and kisses, your pal, Eric. Well, I appreciate the hugs and kisses. Um, thanks, Eric. Uh, and that's a really good idea. Um, so, here's a blast from the past, from way back in April 2009, that you can only find right here on FWIW Classic Mary Worth Podcasting. Uh, moving on, then. Uh, let's discuss our favorite comic. This is the comic discussion portion of the show. That we yes. call... What do we call it? For what it's worth. Um, Eric and I have an affinity for a certain newspaper comic strip yes. about an octogenarian who is full of good sage advice to help people even when they don't want to be helped. Yes, And exactly. her name, the patron saint of all things that are well advised, is Mary Worth. Yes. Um... I've been reading Mary Worth for about eight months now. Yes. <laughs> You've been reading for about six or so? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, let's give them a little bit of background on what's going on, because we're in the middle of the storyline right now in Mary Worth. Yes, sorry. You, you give them a rundown. Okay, uh, basically, uh, Mary Worth is an old lady who uh, lives in uh, Charterstone Apartments or Charterstone Retirement Village or something. It's Charter Stone, I know that much for sure. And uh, she has a boyfriend whose name is um, Dr. Uh, Jeff. Um, Dr. Jeff. Dr. Dr. Jeff. I forget Dr. Jeff's last name, but it doesn't matter. Dr. Jeff is um, my Mary Worth's boyfriend, and Mary Worth has, um, I mean, Dr. Jeff has a grown up daughter who yes. is a doctor, and her name is Dr. Dog. Yes. No, her, her name is Adrian. Her name is... I wish. Her name is Adrian, and Adrian has just met a smarmy man with a pencil thin mustache named Mr. Ted Ponzi. And they who, are going basically, to get married. For those of you who don't know, he uh, basically looks like um, Gomez from the Evans family. <laughs> he looks very much like Gomez from the Evans family. <laughs> And uh, this whole time, he's been, like, needling Adrian and Dr. Jeff, like, oh, I, I used to be a photographer for National Geography magazine. It's not National Geographic. National Geography. And uh, he was a photographer for ten years. And uh, would you like to donate some money to these starving children in Vietnam? So, so he basically did a uh, Nigerian prince scheme. Yeah, and from the beginning, everybody, as everybody suspected, uh, Ted Ponzi was a flim-flam man. Yes. Uh, 
totally just bamboozling uh, the um, Doctor family. Maybe Jeff's last name is Doctor. Maybe that's it. Jeff Doctor and Adrian Doctor. Doctor Jeff Doctor. <laughs> Doctor Jeff Doctor and Doctor Adrian Doctor. Yes. <laughs> so he he's been bamboozling and flummoxing the Doctor family for quite a while. Um, getting money out of them, and uh, just recently, yep. he started mentioning to um, Adrian um, that he has a sister named Vicky, who is in Double Dutch with some muscle men sort of guy, and yes. he owes a lot of money to a lot of people. Uh-oh. So, that um, poor woman. What? I said, that poor woman. Oh, poor Adrian. She is a slave to the emotion that we humans call love. <laughs> <laughs> but, All right, well, continue on. But anyway, uh, that's so um, she's talking to uh, Doctor Jeff or Doctor Dad in this case. Yes. And he makes her call her, or he makes her call him Doctor Dad. Yes. I made that up. But, that doesn't um, really happen. Dr. Dad does a background check on Mr. Ted Convey and discovers that he did not indeed work for National Geography for 10 years. It was more like 10 weeks. Oh, and he my. was not a photographer. He was something else. I don't remember what. Uh, so anyway... He, he, was, uh, he was one of the animals. It was like, <laughs> he was. He was like a giraffe or something. It is revealed this week that Ted Convey is a gibbon. <laughs> That's gonna happen next uh, next week. Yeah, that's next. He's gonna, he's gonna rip rip a mask off, and he's he's really a baboon. But anyway, Adrian says, "I don't believe it. Dad can loves me," and she runs out the door, and that leads us to Today's. last Sunday's trip. <laughs> All right, Dr. I'll... Jeff Doctor is leaning out the door, and he is crying after his grown daughter. Wait, who's doing... Who's doing Dr. Jeff? You we want didn't to do decide. Dr. Jeff, or... I'll do Dr. Jeff. Okay. Adrian, don't! When her father discovers that Ted lied about his work history, Adrian rushes out to confront her fiancé. I look... sitting in the car, and she has a hot bubble coming out of her head with Ted's face in it. And he's saying, I love you, Queenie. Adrian is distraught, and she begins to cry. She is thinking, whatever Ted lied about, he didn't lie about loving me. She thinks, not the way he treats me. And then there is a thought bubble coming out of her thought bubble. Yes. <laughs> and Ted kissing. <laughs> I think that's the first time. I've ever seen a double, a double thought bubble in a comic. It has happened several times in Merry Words. <laughs> it happens all the time. <laughs> and then, with dramatic blue and yellow lighting. Her uh, spidey sense, I guess. With tears flowing out of her eyes, Adrian thinks, and I'm going to affect the voice now. Okay. He probably has a good explanation. <laughs> Wiping her tears away. I don't care that he lied about his employment background. And then uh, they show a panel of Ted uh, packing things up. Packing up a suitcase. He said, well, uh, better take my computer. <laughs> no, he's, he's not saying that. Little laptop. <laughs> I know, what the hell is that? <laughs> he's like wrapping it up in like uh, butcher's paper or something. <laughs> In his very tastefully decorated hotel room. Yes, in in usual uh, usual Mary Worth fashion, Just <laughs> ugly ugly uh, black and white uh, paintings on the wall, and uh, people wearing outlandish clothing. <laughs> yes. In the uh, and then that goes straight to uh, Tuesday's trip, and you will notice in Mary Worth, very little yes. happens from day to day. Yes, <laughs> because it's Adrian only two is, panels. Adrian is still in the car. <laughs> the, the, the narration panel says, Adrian tries calling her fiancé as she rushes to see him. Pick up, Ted. Pick up. And I'd like to uh, point out 
that the guy in the hooded sweatshirt looks like exactly like Dr. Jeff? <laughs> or it, either Dr. Ted, either Dr. Ted, or Ozymandias from uh, The Watchmen. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> and then Adrian holding the world's smallest cell phone to her. <laughs> Pick up the phone and tell me you have a good explanation for lying to me. Are you sure that's a cell phone? Maybe that's why he won't pick up. It's not a cell phone. It's like a candy. It's a candy bar or something. Yep. <laughs> that's what it is. It's a zip phone lighter. <laughs> and also note that her uh, her shirt has changed color. Has it? Yep. On Mondays, I mean Sundays, it's uh, it's pink, and then on <laughs> on Monday, it's black. <laughs> her, her dress, her dress, or whatever it is. She uh, she changed clothes really quick. In the yep. <laughs> in the matter of, of a few minutes. She ch- she changed while driving. I've seen people do that before. <laughs> so on Wednesday, she rushes up to uh, Ted, who is packing what appears to be a large sheet cake pop. Yes. In the trunk of his car. He's going. He's he's going to a surprise birthday. <laughs> For his sister Vicky. Yes. But uh, I kept phoning you. Why didn't you answer? I was going to call you later. Which? Well, my. I like that voice. I'm gonna do it again. I was going. I was going to call you later. <laughs> Vicky needs me now. And now, uh, Adrian is doing one of my favorite things in Mary Word. Lightly, lightly touching, touching her fingertips, fingertips to her breastbone. <laughs> <laughs> that happened three or four it's times. It's dramatic. <laughs> it's very dramatic, Sam. You just can wait. wait. I, I need to talk to you, Ted. No time. I'm sorry, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> that boy was going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Thursday's trip. Yes. A complete departure from the drama taking place here right, in Wednesday. Wednesday. You're getting a day ahead of yourself. Oh, am I? It's Wednesday. Yes. Uh, Mary Worth is quietly celebrating Earth Day in her garden, which evidently is humongous. Yes. <laughs> Look at her yard. She lives in a retirement I, I think. I think that's a uh, a cemetery. And she's just <laughs> cutting it's flowers up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she's at Al- Aldo Kellerath's uh, grave. <laughs> Oh, Aldo, we hardly knew you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the palatial estate that Mary Worth lives in. Yes. It's out in the courtyard. <laughs> and there's a, po- uh, there's a uh, quote by Wendell Berry. The earth is what we all have in common. And then, I, I imagine this in Mary Worth's voice, the voice that I've affected every time I've um, read Mary Worth's dialogue. We only have one planet. <laughs> she fondly strokes the stem of a rose. <laughs> it would be better if she just had a bare hand. <laughs> Cutting yourself up with the thorn? Yes. <laughs> okay. So that uh, brief intermission ends on Thursday. Adrian's playing it cool. Yes. She's leaning up against his car with her arms crossed. She's not taking any more head shit. <laughs> she looks like uh, she looks like Fonzie or something. It's her posture, like one of those like <laughs> being Mister Tough Guy here. Is it true you lied about working for Nation Geography? No, of course I worked for ten weeks, not ten years, like you said. Bob. Is that what? Is that what this is about? You're making a, a mountain out of a mole here. Poking him pointedly in the chest. Yes. For ten weeks. Poke. Not ten years. Poke. Like you said. Poke. 
I really wish they, you know how like uh, for Watchmen, they release like animated comics or whatever. <laughs> they should do that for Mary Worth. We should do that for Mary Worth. Yes, we should, and include it. That would be <laughs> way too much work. <laughs> exactly. As is us talking about Mary Worth at length on our podcast. <laughs> yes, nobody's gonna listen to this. Nobody, but we'll enjoy it. We'll look back fondly. Yes. After I die, we'll <laughs> have these treasured memories. Uh, all right. You can show our kids when you when our kids come up and say, "What was Dad like?" <laughs> no, sorry, what was Mom like? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have them on a reel-to-reel recorder. Well, okay. Yes. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> okay, that, that was kind of disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving it in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Friday. What else did you lie about Ted as she's holding the door of the car closed? I don't have time to talk about this now, Adrian. We'll talk later. And then he punches her. Yeah. He, he's like, <clears throat> around a little bit. I, I think he's like, got like a psychic fist or something. That's what that, that little thing is. <laughs> he's like, he's, he's using, throwing her. Yeah, he's, he's, he's using telekinesis to throw her away. Because yeah. seriously, if you look, look at the first panel. He's got his hand out. And then look at the second one. He's, he's pushing her away. <laughs> <laughs> Just bam, get out of here. <laughs> Is your sister a lie too? I don't even know why you're going. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then on Saturday, do all comics have a Saturday comic? Uh, I don't know. Mary Worth, Mary Worth sure does. Evidently, Karen Moy and Joe Gallia. Uh, <laughs> nothing better to do on a Saturday morning. So they turn out another Mary Worth that nobody's going to read. Yes. <laughs> and then Adrian, as she appears to be slapping Ted in the face. Uh, yes, or, or, or pulling on his ear, like a teacher. <laughs> You're coming with me, mister. Ted, <laughs> uh, uh, please talk to me. And then, uh, uh, the <laughs> voice off screen says, Edward Colby, you're under arrest. Put your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're calling him that. Ted's already assumed the position, hands behind his head. Yep, he knows he's the drill. He's decided to do the Macarena. Because <laughs> uh, uh, Ka- Karen Moy still thinks still thinks that's popular. <laughs> he's trying to distract the police with a fun hand. Uh, I would like to point out: Do you find it kind of disturbing that Ted is wearing a belt? Yes. <laughs> but anyway, it, it, it looks like they they drew a belt in, but they didn't color it. <laughs> it's the same color as his pants, which happened in the day before too. So. Yep. But anyway, two detectives show up: one in lime green and the other in pumpkin orange. <laughs> they just got back from a the Halloween party. <laughs> Because they're dressed like Harry and Lloyd in that scene from Dumb and Dumber. Yes, they are. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the cop says, Because that's his real name. He's charged with fraud, bigamy, forgery, tampering with public records. I, I love your voice for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> the cartoon Irish cop in yes. his, uh, yes. in his <laughs> night stick and whistling. <laughs> but anyway, that leaves us with a cliffhanger where we'll yes. pick up next week. Yes. Take you through the week in Mary Worth, and that's Mary Worth. For what it's worth. For what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not much. Very little. <laughs> I believe they should change the name of the title to Mary Worthless. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're back in the present. It's now 2012. We recorded what you just heard back in April of 2009, if you can believe that. This is the end of the show, but before we call it quits, I'd like to thank some people. 
I'd like to thank Wanders of Mary Worth and Me. You can find him at maryworthandme.blogspot.com. It's a blog where Wanders writes jokes about Mary Worth. He's a really funny guy, and he's a really nice guy, and we love him. I want to kiss him right on top of his little head. I'd also like to thank the Aquabats for not pursuing legal action against us because we use their track, Sequence Erase, as our theme song, and we do that without permission. I love those guys. They're the best band in the world. I'd also like to thank the Beach Boys for writing a song called California Girls before they uploaded their consciousnesses to the World Wide Web and re-recorded all of their greatest hits as low-quality middies. We play that song at the end of our show, and you're going to hear that in a couple of minutes. Uh, we'll be back next week with a new episode of For What It's Worth, where we'll discuss the ill-fated cruise ship disaster taking place for Wilbur and Don Weston. It's going to be a special double episode of For What It's Worth. My name is Sam, and speaking on behalf of my best buddy in the whole wide world, Eric, I'd like to remind you kids... Plan for the future, because that's where you're going to spend the rest of your life. And that was your week of April 19th, 2009 in Mary Worth. For what it's worth.